This week on the Modified World, we're reprising our investigations using pig ears on what actually happens to cartilage when you pierce it. So stick around. So, welcome to the Modified World. It's the weekly web series about body modification, people who do it, people who get it, of course, why it matters. I'm J.C. Potts. I'm the senior piercer at the world-renowned Pangea Piercing in beautiful, sunny downtown Ann Arbor, Michigan. And, of course, you know, I purvey internet wackiness. So here I am, purveying internet wackiness. This week, well, I should start off by saying a couple weeks ago, you might have saw my video investigating the difference between piercing guns and piercing needles, especially as how they relate to cartilage piercings. It's educational and informative, and if you haven't seen it yet, you probably ought to, so that we're all on the same page. You know, standard piercing needles, definitely an advancement over the old-timey piercing guns. Well, that's not to say that body piercing technology hasn't advanced, though, past the needle, especially as it relates to cartilage. I'm speaking of what's commonly either referred to as a chamfer needle, a O needle, or what's been used forever, a biopsy punch. They're like a little miniature cookie cutter for skin. And as that sounds, they core out a little bit of cartilage as you use them. We'll start our process over here by we pierce this pig ear. First with a standard needle, then with a chamfer needle or O needle. We'll just call it an O needle for this purpose. Taking a look at it, when you look at the front, the needle makes a, a small clean hole, but then of course if you look at the O needle hole, it's super clean. Looking at the back, it's even more dramatic. Of course, the needle leaves a nice little, nice little mark, kind of pushes some tissue out of the way. But compared to the O needle hole, oh, there's not even a question. It's crisp and clean and looks like you could almost fly a remote control helicopter through it. The most dramatic appearance happens though when we cut it open and actually look at it. The C-shaped hole that you get from a standard piercing needle, well, like I said, of course, it sure beats the ragged, jagged hole that you get from a piercing gun, but compared to the O-needle hole, there's no question. It doesn't even take a trained eye to be able to see exactly the piece of cartilage removed, which once again is going to allow for a lot easier growth of skin cells through that hole. That's really important. Hold it up to the light. You can almost see a little bit of light through the needle piercing hole. But looking through the O needle hole, it's almost like looking through a pinhole camera. It's so clean and crisp, it makes me smile. And it'd be super easy for skin to grow through that hole and be able to meet on the other side and create a little tunnel of skin without causing a lot of pressure or scar tissue or anything like that. And I'm sure that some of you out there are probably thinking, well, I would really hate to have a big hole in my ear once I, once I take the jewelry out. Don't worry about that. It, you actually have to go at least two millimeters or larger, which is 12 gauge with, with the punch, to be able to actually have any appreciable visible difference in the hole once the jewelry has been taken out. Anything like normal sized, what I say normal sized, you know, the one and a half millimeter, one millimeter, 18 gauge, 14 gauge, those type of, like I said, somewhat normal piercings. You take them out and you can barely even see it. It's just a little tiny dot like you'd expect from any other piercing that was removed. I know some of you guys are going to be a little skeptical and say, well, does a dead pig ear actually translate to living human tissue? And I would say yes, but of course, don't take my word for it. Part of this investigation was spurred by the conversations I had had with Sampa von Cyborg a while back. I find that you're one of, you know, of course, you're one of the most experienced people in the world when it comes to working on people's ears under the skin. You get to see things 
under people's skin that most piercers will never, ever, ever see. So, uh, with that in mind, have you noticed any difference between gun piercings, needle piercings, and punch piercings in people's cartilage? Yes, I noticed a lot. Uh, with the gun, uh, the cartilage is like uh, cracked everywhere. It's like a um, there's a big cracks coming from the uh, hole from many directions and uh, same happened actually with the uh, normal piercing needle and sometimes I've seen uh, uh, even splinters like a piece of cartilage uh, go, like, uh, goes into the cartilage and causing kind of like a splinter um, I've seen piece of cartilage next to the piercing hole when when you uh, do the piercing with the pebble needle it hasn't take the f***ing uh, piece of uh, cartilage off so mm -hmm. it's just a kind of under the skin between mm -hmm. the cartilage and skin that's causing, what, causing lots of problems that's exactly what happened to my conch piercing uh, dermal punch hole it's the cartilage is not damaged you haven't seen that whole video by the way I I suggest you watch it because, once again, valuable information and a little more in-depth even than this. So go ahead and check that out. And that was my show this week. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something or possibly was even remotely entertained. I do this every week. So if you haven't subscribed yet, you ought to. Come on back and see what we're doing. And share this video. The ears you save might be somebody you care about. And, of course, and this is important, I've heard a lot of folks say, well, you know, JC does good things and, you know, I appreciate what he does, but I don't necessarily agree with everything he says. On this thing, if I'm wrong, call me out. If you have data that I don't, then I'd like to see it. Because... I really feel like the jury's pretty well in on this. But if I'm wrong, call me out and let's debate. I'd love to hear what you got to say. So go ahead and leave me a comment in the section down below. Or email me, tweet at me, whatever. It doesn't really matter. But I'll be looking forward to hearing from you. And be sure to stop back by next week for yet another episode of The Modified World. Wow. <laughs>